challenge and the real job of mobility is to bring uh, tremendous firepower to bear uh, exactly in the configuration required by the commander on the ground in the AOR. The people of Air Mobility Command are what make it work. If you define important jobs as those that are uh, given the task of solving the most difficult problems, then they have some of the most important jobs in this country. We had an interval while we were flying our bombers and B-29s out of China and India when uh, we just couldn't get enough gas into the country at all. And the Air Force modified a bunch of B-24s into tankers. They called them the C-109. It carried one hell of a load of fuel. It could carry more fuel to our bases in China and come home without refueling than could the B-29 itself. And he said, okay, what did they do in the Berlin Edit? They put, a, they put an airplane at the end of the runway every 10 minutes and loaded or not, it took off and it flew and we just cycled the airplanes round and round and round and round to make sure that Berlin was supplied as we had promised them. Uh, and so we did that for Bosnia. And we told the customer, we're gonna put an airplane at the end of the ramp. So we'll put a C-17 there every hour. And if it's not loaded, We'll taxi it back to the end of the line and we'll put another one up at the front of the line and we'll put a new crew on it. The biggest changes that I saw in my career was a general acceptance of the enlisted corps as being much more valuable to the inevitable outcome and productivity and the excellence of the United States Air Force. As our force decreased in size, we didn't have the luxury of having officers or senior NCOs make all our decisions. We had to push that down a little bit. first MAC exercise that uh, we got involved in was in after the 72 war, the recovery of the prisoners of war. There were 600 and some odd of them that came home on MAC 120 C-141s. And it was a touch and go affair. You can imagine flying big airlift missions into uh, the capital. Uh, of North Vietnam very shortly after we just bombed hell out of the place. Grenada, 1984. Uh, it got to be known as Max War, uh, mainly because uh, we did all the fighting. It was very unusual for a, a mobility command to be doing the fighting. And except for the Army Rangers and the 82nd Airborne Division, which we delivered onto the island of Grenada. Uh, the only people that did any fighting was uh, Military Airlift Command. Well, it was a very vibrant time uh, in the world. This was the early 1990s. Uh, if you think about the fact that this command is involved in virtually any natural disaster, any conflict, any humanitarian effort that goes on anywhere in the world, and you think back to, to what was happening then, very quickly you come to realize that uh, we were a busy command. We would be lost today without the Guard and Reserve. Guard and Reserve people make significant contributions and in fact um, have a more difficult life to balance in my estimation because uh, they still have responsibilities as parents. There are still bills to pay and it's kind of like a little bit of an insecure life sometimes when they have to be called back to active duty. They do this with great pride um, much like their active duty counterparts. And when they're performing their tasks, nobody can tell the difference. 
And we're very, very blessed in the United States Air Force that our Guard and Reserve has always been this well trained and this capable. Today, very similar to where we were in 1992, the whole national military strategy in the United States is about to change. Mobility always has to be ready. It has to be ready on a moment's notice to go whenever a crisis erupts, almost before. If the war on terror and what we do to combat terrorism is the wave of the future, then we're probably not gonna solve the problem in 10 years, which means we're gonna be moving forces here and there to a lot of unexpected places, and they don't all have 10,000 foot runways and big ramps. Look at CNN 5, 10, 20 years from now. What's the world gonna be like 5, 10, 20 years from now? That's what AMC's gonna be doing 5, 10, 20 years from now. American serviceman, woman, uh, there's no, no end to what they can accomplish if they're given the right mission, given the wherewithal to do it, a little motivation, and they take over and get it done. So I guess uh, the most important element would be the people. The people who are feet on the ground people are security policemen, they're crew chiefs, they're flight engineers, they're load masters, enlisted people as well as officers, bringing all of this to other people who have no other means for care. We're gonna put operating bases in places we've never had them before. And once again, we're going to be much more dependent on rotational forces going out to different places around the world to provide influence and stability. None of that's possible without Air Mobility Command. You don't have to see it in the headlines. You can see it in the effectiveness of what the country does wherever it is because you know that nothing in the world happens without the mobility machine having moved first.